Well, good afternoon, my name's James and welcome to Oakvale Farm in Thornwell today. Today I've got a few of my favourite animals to show you guys. Now all these are snakes, we do encourage you to pat them. If anyone is scared of snakes, today's a great opportunity to get over your fear. If you do want to pat them though, we've got two very simple rules. The first rule is, please don't pat them on the head. They do have very sensitive heads. And if you do pat them, pat them from the neck down to the tail, because that's the way their scales go. It just makes it feel a little bit more comfortable for them. Now this is our first snake we're going to show you. Her name's Button, she's an Ollie Python. She still really is just a baby, see, having it out, Buttons. She's about a metre and a half now. This species can quite easily get to three to even four metres long. In fact, there's a subspecies called the Western Australia or the Pilbara Ollie Python. They have been known to get to six and a half metres long. Now, when she's that big, she can pretty much eat anything she wants. I've actually been in the Northern Territory about six or seven years ago. I saw one of these guys eat a full grown wallaby. They really can eat anything. Now, because it's a python, it's got no venom or no poison or no fangs, but she's still got teeth. She's got about 70 teeth in her mouth, they're all needle sharp, and they kind of curve back like a fish hook. So when she bites onto something, the more it struggles, the more it gets hooked on. Now, because she's a python and she's got no venom or no poison, how she kills her food is she uses constriction. What she'll do is, if she sees something like a rat, she'll go in an S position like this, she'll rock it forward, she'll grab the rat. Usually grabs the rat on the face, because once she's got her the face, this rat can no longer bite her back. Next thing she does is, she wraps her body around it. Now she doesn't crush it, all she does is she just squeezes it. Every time the rat breathes out, the snake tightens and keeps tightening and tightening and tightening until eventually the rat can no longer breathe and dies of suffocation. Then they swallow it in one go. A snake's jaws, they're kind of like elastic, they can stretch. They can eat something about 10 times the size of their head and they can eat something that weighs about as much as they do. But they don't have to eat that much. This snake here, I feed her once every week. If I didn't feed this snake for say six months, chances are she'll be fine. A snake like this will probably take six to even 12 months to actually starve to death. In fact, there was a boa constrictor in a London Zoo that did go three and a half years without eating and then started eating again and it was fine. They've also got really bad eyesight. She can very, she could probably only see about five to even six meters in front of her. So how they find their food is, they use two ways. One way is, see how she keeps flicking out her tongue? She's actually tasting the air. Snakes have incredible sense of smell, so they don't actually smell their nose, they actually smell their tongue. She flicks out her tongue, gets the scent particles, brings it back in. That's called the Jacobin's organ on the roof of her mouth. She can find something from a couple hundred meters away. And the other way is, underneath her bottom jaw, you'll bow nose is a small row of dots. They're actually heat sensing pits. So she can sense warm blood prey in the dark. Now in the world, there are about 2,700 different species of snake. In Australia, we've got about 270 different species of snake. But in Australia, we are very lucky. We do have the top 11 of the world's most poisonous snakes. But even though we do have the top 11 of the world's most poisonous snakes, in Australia, on average, we lose about one person every year to snake bite. And very rarely, we might lose two, but on average, it is only one person. Now, that one person might sound like a lot, but when you think about it, every year in Australia on average, we lose about five people to being attacked by cattle. So statistically speaking, you've got about five times more chance of dying from a cow in Australia than you do a snake. So what we'll do is we'll bring this guy around if you have a pat or if you want to have a hold. And yeah, if you've got any questions, please feel free to come ask me. So today I also brought another snake. This is one of my favorites as well. It's a black-headed python. Now it's again, not quite full grown. This snake will get to be about twice the size of this quite easily. Now, if you do see a snake in the wild, for all you gotta do is just stand very, very still. If you stand very, very still, the snake can't actually see you. You can scream as much as you want because snakes are actually deaf. So it just makes you feel a lot better about yourselves. If you find a snake in your backyard, that's a little bit different. If you find a snake in your backyard, the first thing you'll do is you'll get all your brothers and sisters, all your pets safely inside. Now, once all your brothers and sisters, all your pets are safely inside, then you've got to get someone responsible. So don't get dad, get mum, and mum will catch a snake for you. Well, mum won't actually catch a snake. She'll call people wires or the police department, and they'll send out a snake catcher for you. Now, if you get bitten by a snake, chance are it's your own fault, because nine out of 10 people being bitten by snakes have been trying to catch or kill the snake. So if you leave the snake alone in the first place, it will leave you alone. But if you do get bitten by a snake, the first thing you'll do is you've got to stay calm which might be easier said than done because you've just been bitten by a big brown snake, so the best thing probably to do is to sit down. Next thing you do is you remove all jewelry like watches, bracelets, and rings because your hand's gonna swell up. Don't wash or cut the bite site, leave it alone. Instead, 
You just go grab one of these bandages. Now, if you don't have one of these bandages, all you gotta do is rip up anything, rip up a shirt, rip up a towel. School uniforms are excellent. Go home and practice. This is how you put it on. You wrap it a couple times around the bite site, you move down, you cover up those little fingernails, you go back up the limb about the same pressure or the same tightness if you had a sprained ankle. So tight, but not so tight it hurts. Go all the way up the top. Once you get to the top, you go back down. Now you need to mobilize or keep your arm still. The easiest way is put your hand like this in your shirt and you give yourself a, a possibly six to even eight hours. So go straight to hospital. Once you get hospital, don't let anyone but the doctor take off the bandage because once the bandage comes off, you, well, you start dying again. So that's all the animals I have to show you guys today. Look guys, I'll hang around for the next 20 minutes or so. If you guys want to come up, have a pad of the snake or even get your photo taken with I'm sure you can work that out. But other than that guys, I hope you have a great day today and enjoy your day at Oakvale. Thanks for listening and we'll see you a bit later on.